Well, as we move into our <clears throat> study of Jeremiah, uh, tonight we're going to cover Jeremiah's chapter 40, Jeremiah chapters 40 through 45, Lord willing. And uh, <clears throat> we're, we've studied 39 chapters of the 52 chapters in Jeremiah, and um, we're coming to the point to where uh, Judah is being taken uh, captive by Babylon, just as God promised would happen if they didn't turn to him. And, uh, <clears throat> and we'll see tonight that uh, once again, you know, God tells them, if you'll turn back to me, I'll take care of you. But tonight they get pretty uh, kind of in your face, we're not going to obey you. And, um, <clears throat> and so God deals with them. And uh, I, I want you all to also kind of keep in mind for our future studies because uh, about this time when <clears throat> uh, when when the, the Babylonians are capturing some of the of the uh, Jews that this is the time that Daniel and his friends get taken into into Babylon uh, as as uh, prisoners and so um, after this, after, the, after we finish the study of Jeremiah, we'll do Lamentations, and then Lord willing, we'll go into Daniel. And so just keep in mind that Daniel, based on what we're studying right now, Daniel's already there in Babylon. And it's, you know, it gets a little confusing trying to keep all the timeline that's going on um, in in order, uh, but uh, just keep keep that in 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 mind. <coughs> so in Jeremiah forty, and I'm trying to get rid of this cough drop because my throat was a little bit scratchy, and so I thought I better get one. Now I know I can't talk if I have one in my mouth, but. Last, in, in last week's ver, or last week's chapters, um, you know, we, we had the fall of Jerusalem, and and so now there's going to be some more opportunities for those that are left um, to obey God, and there's going to be um, there's going to be um, uh, Jeremiah is going to be given a choice. Uh, because he becomes friends with a guard, uh, he's going to be given a choice to go on into Babylon with the uh, rest or stay with the remnant that stays in <clears throat> Judah. So let's start in chapter 40. And once again, I'm going to <clears throat> attempt to read through, the, through chapter 45, and then we'll go back and we'll do a little bit of discussion on, uh, on the chapters. Chapter 40, the word came to Jeremiah from the Lord after <clears throat> Nebuzaradan, commander of the imperial guard, had released him at Ramah. He had found Jeremiah bound in chains among all the captives from Jerusalem and Judah who were being carried into exile to Babylon. So here, you know, because of the fall of Jerusalem last, last in the chapter we studied before, <clears throat> now the Babylonians as God promised, has taken over Judah, and they're being taken up into to Babylon. When the commander of the guard, <clears throat> when the commander of the guard found Jeremiah, he said to him, "The Lord your God decreed this disaster for this place, and now the Lord has brought it about. He has done just as he said he would. All this happened because you people, talking to the Jews, sinned against the Lord." And did not obey him. 
But today I'm freeing you from the chains on your wrist, and come with me to Babylon if you like, and I will look after you. But if you do not want to, then don't come. So he's saying, you know, I heard what you were telling your people. I believe your God told your people what they were to do because of the fact that they sinned. And what he said he was going to do, he's now doing. I see that. So this guard here is believing what Jeremiah had been talking about because now he's seeing <clears throat> this. Uh, he's seeing God come after the Jews and take them to Babylon. And he says, look, the whole country lies before you. Go wherever you please. However, <clears throat> before Jeremiah turned to go, Nebuzaradan added, go back to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, whom the king of Babylon has appointed, appointed over the towns of Judah, and live with him among the people, or go anywhere else you please. Then the commander gave him provisions and a present and let him go. And so Jeremiah went to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam at Mizpah, and stayed with him among the people who were left behind in the land. So Jeremiah had the choice, going into Babylon, I'll take care of you up there, or <clears throat> stay, with, stay with your people here in uh, Judah, the remnant uh, of people that were left, who were the, the poor people, the people who couldn't, did, who uh, had very little means. And so, uh, so he had that choice. <clears throat> and, and he decided to stay with those, with those, with the people there in Judah. When all the army officers and their men who were still in the open country heard that the king of Babylon had appointed Gedali, a son of Ahikam, as a governor over the land and had put him in charge of the men, women, and children who were the poorest in the land and who had not been carried into exile to Babylon, they came to Gedaliah at Mizpah. Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, Johanan, and Jonathan, the sons of Cariah, Sariah, son of Tanamuth, and sons of Ephi, the, the Nidophathite, and Jezaniah, the son of the Machathite, and their men. Gedaliah, Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, took an oath to reassure them and their men, do not be afraid to serve the Babylonians, he said. Settle down in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it will go with you, go well with you. I myself will stay at Mizpah to represent you before the Babylonians who come to us. But you are to harvest the wine, summer fruit, and oil, and put them in your storage jars, and live in the towns <clears throat> you have taken over. So now, uh, Gedaliah has, he's been made governor of these people that remained here. When word got out, a lot of the Jews that had dispersed <clears throat> came back to this area. And Gedaliah told him, I'm going to take care of you. You're going to work and, um, and live in the towns and, and, and farm and <clears throat> do things, but we're gonna, you're going to be okay. When all the Jews in Moab, Ammon, and Edom, and all the other countries heard that the king of Babylon had left a remnant in Judah and had appointed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, the son of Shaph Shaphan, the governor over them, they all came back. This is what I said a while ago. They all came back to the land of Judah, to Gedaliah at Mizpah, from all the countries where they had been scattered, and they harvested an abundance of wine and summer fruit. <clears throat> Johanan, son of Caria, and all the army officers still in the open, open country came to Gedaliah at Mizpah and said to him, Don't you know that Baalus, king of the Ammonites, has sent Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, to take your life? But Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, did not believe them. Then Johanan, son of Caria, said privately to Gedaliah and Mizpah, Let me go and kill Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, and no one will know it. Why should he take your life and cause all the Jews who are gathered around you to be scattered and the remnant of Judah to perish? But Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, said to Johanan, son of Cariah, don't do such a thing. What you are saying about Ishmael is not true. In the seventh month, Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, 
the son of Elishama, who was of royal blood and had been one of the king's officers, came with ten men to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam at Mizpah. While they were eating together there, Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, and the ten men who were with him got up and struck down Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, with the sword, killing the one whom the king of Babylon had appointed as governor over the land. Ishmael also killed all the Jews who were with Gedaliah <coughs> at Mizpah, as well as the Babylonian soldiers who were there. The day after Gedaliah's assassination, before anyone knew it, 80 men who had shaved off their beards, torn their clothes, and cut themselves came from Shechem, Shiloh, and Samaria, bringing grain offerings and incense with them to the house of the Lord. Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, went out from Mizpah to meet them, weeping as he went. When he met them, he said, Come to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam. When they went into the city, Ishmael, I don't know how many times I got to tell us Ishmael is the son of Nathaniah. I mean, it's like, but anyway, <laughs> Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, and the men who were with him slaughtered them and threw them into a cistern. <clears throat> but ten of them said to Ishmael, Don't kill us. We have wheat and barley, oil and honey hidden in a field. So he let them alone and did not kill them with their others. Now the cistern where he threw all the bodies of the men he had killed, along with Gedaliah, was the one King Asa had made as part of his defense against Basha, king of Israel. Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, filled it with the dead. Ishmael made captives of all the rest of the people who were in Mizpah, the king's daughters along with all the others who were left there, over whom Nebuchadnezzar, <coughs> or Neb Nebuzaradan, commander of the imperial guard, had appointed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam. Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, took them captive and set out to cross over to the Ammonites. When Johanan, son of Kariah, and all the army officers who were with him heard about all the crimes Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, had committed, they took all their men and went to fight Ishmael, son of Nathaniah. They caught up with him near the great pool in Gibeon. When all the people Ishmael had with him saw Johanan, son of Kariah, and the army officers, who were with him, they were glad. All the people Ishmael had taken captive at Mizpah turned and went over to Johanan, son of Kariah. But Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, and eight of his men escaped from Johanan and fled to the Ammonites. Then Johanan, son of Kariah, and all the army officers who were with him led away all the survivors from Mizpah, whom he had recovered from Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, after he had assassinated Gedaliah, son of Ahikam the soldiers, women, children, and court officials he had brought from Gibeon. And they went on, stopping at Geruth Kimmim near Bethlehem, on their way to Egypt to escape the Babylonians. They were afraid of them because Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, had killed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, whom the king of Babylon had appointed as governor over the land. So <clears throat> they're heading off, and they're heading off to Egypt because they think that they can be safe there in Egypt. Then all the army officers, including Johanan, son of Kariah, and Jezaniah, son of Hoshiah, and all the people from the least to the greatest, approached Jeremiah the prophet and said to him, Please, hear our petition and pray to the Lord your God for this entire remnant. For as you now see, though we were once many, now only a few are left. Pray that the Lord your God will tell us where we should go and what we should do. I've heard you, replied Jeremiah the prophet. I will certainly pray to the Lord your God as you have requested. I will tell you everything the Lord says and will keep nothing back from you. Then they said to Jeremiah, May the Lord be a true and faithful witness against us if we do not act in accordance with everything the Lord your God sends you to tell us. Whether it is favorable or unfavorable, we will obey the Lord our God to whom we are sending you so that it will go well with us. For we will obey the Lord our God. So things get tough. And so now they want to, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to do whatever we're told to do. Tell us what <clears throat> God wants us to do, and we're going to do it. But 10 days later, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. So he called together Johanan, son of Kariah, and all the army officers who were with him, and all the people from the least to the greatest. He said to them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, to whom you sent me to present your petition says, if you stay in this land, I will build you up and not tear you down. I will plant you and not uproot you. For I am grieved over the disaster I have inflicted on you. 
Do not be afraid of the king of Babylon, whom you now fear. Do not be afraid of him, declares the Lord, for I am with you and will save you and deliver you from his hands. I will show you compassion so that he will have compassion on you and restore you to your land. However, if you say we will not stay in this land and so dis disobey the Lord your God, and if you say no, we will go and live in Egypt where we will not see war or hear the trumpet of, or be hungry for bread, then hear the word of the Lord, O remnant of Judah. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. If you are determined to go to Egypt and you do go to settle there, then the sword you fear will overtake you there, and the famine you dread will follow you into Egypt, and there you will die. Indeed, all who are determined to go to Egypt to settle there will die by the sword, famine, and plague. Not one of them will survive or escape the disaster I will bring on them. This is what the Lord, Almighty, the God of Israel, says. As my anger and wrath have been poured out on those who lived in Jerusalem, so will my wrath be poured out on you when you go to Egypt. <coughs> You'll be an object of cursing and horror, of condemnation and reproach. You will never see this place again. O remnant, O Judah, the Lord has told you, do not go to Egypt. Be sure of this. I warn you today that you made a fatal mistake when you sent me to the Lord your God and said, pray to the Lord our God for us. Tell us everything he says and we will do it. I have told you today but you still have not obeyed Lord your God in all he sent me to tell you. So now be sure of this. You will die by the sword, famine, and plague in the place where you want to go to settle. <clears throat> so there they, they get the answer from Jeremiah of what the, of the, what the Lord says, and he tells them, don't go to, don't go to Egypt and, because things are going to be very bad for you. And you know, how many times when perhaps we, we know that we should do something and we don't do it, that we find out later why we shouldn't do it? And how many times do we, we often try to escape <clears throat> because maybe we've done something wrong or we've thought something wrong, but we, we try to escape that by going to Egypt by going somewhere else, by, by getting out. <clears throat> and, uh, but we can't hide. God is going to uh, find us. It, <clears throat> so in 43, when Jeremiah finished <clears throat> telling the people of all the, world, words, all the words of their Lord, their God, everything the Lord God had sent to tell them, Azariah, son of Hoshiah, and Johanan, son of Cariah, and all the arrogant men said to Jeremiah, You are lying. The Lord our God has not sent you to say, You must not go to Egypt to settle there. But Baruch, son of Neriah, is inciting you against us to hand us over to the Babylonians so they may kill us or carry us into exile to Babylon. Y'all remember Baruch from last week? He was the one who scribed all of everything that Jeremiah <clears throat> had had written and then King Nebuchadnezzar tore it up as he as he preached it to him he he tore it up and he burned it so Johanan son of Caria and all the army officers and all the people disobeyed the Lord's command to stay in the land of Judah instead Johanan son of Caria and all the army officers led away all the remnant of Judah who had come back to live in the land of Judah from all the nations where they had been scattered. They also led away all the men, women, and children, and the king's daughters, <coughs> whom, whom Nebuzaradan, commander of the imperial guard, had left with Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, and son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah the prophet, and Baruch, son of Neriah. So they entered Egypt in disobedience to the Lord and went as far as uh, Tapanes. In Tapanes, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, while the Jews are watching, take some large stones with you and bury them in clay in the brick pavement at the entrance of, to Pharaoh's palace in Tapanus. Then say to them, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says, I will send for my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and I will set his throne over these stones that I have buried here. He will spread his royal canopy above them. He will come and attack Egypt, bringing death to those destined for death, captivity to those destined for captivity 
and the sword to those destined for the sword. He will set fire to the temples of the gods of Egypt. He will burn their temples and take their gods captive. As a shepherd wraps his garment around him, so he will wrap Egypt around himself and depart <coughs> from there unscathed. There in the temple of the sun in Egypt, he will demolish the sacred pillars and burn down the temples of the gods of Egypt. This word came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews living in lower Egypt, in Migdal, Tephanes, and Memphis, and in upper Egypt. This was what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. You saw the great disaster I brought on Jerusalem and on the towns of Judah. Today they lie deserted and in ruins because of the evil they have done. They provoked me to anger by burning incense and by worshiping other gods that neither they nor you, your fathers, ever knew. Again and again I sent my servants, the prophets, who said, Do not do this detestable thing that I hate. But they did not listen or pay attention. They did not turn from their wickedness or stop burning incense to other gods. Therefore, my fierce anger was poured out. <coughs> it raged against the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem and made them the desolate ruins they are today. Now, this is what the Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Why bring such great disaster on yourselves by cutting off from Judah the men and women, the children and infants, and so leave yourselves without a remnant? Why provoke me to anger with what your hands have made, burning incense to other gods in Egypt, where you have come to live? You will destroy yourselves and make yourselves an object of cursing and reproach among all the nations on earth. Have you forgotten the wickedness committed by your fathers and by the kings and queens of Judah, and the wickedness committed by you and your wives in the land of Judah and <clears throat> the streets of Jerusalem? To this day they have not humbled themselves or shown reverence, nor have they followed my law and the decrees I have set before you and your fathers. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. I am determined to bring disaster on you and to destroy all of Judah. I will take the remnant of Judah who were determined to go to Egypt to settle there. They will all perish in Egypt. They will fall by the sword or die from famine. From the least to the greatest, they will die by sword or famine. They will become an object of cursing and horror, <coughs> of condemnation and reproach. I will punish those who live in Egypt with the sword, famine, and plague as I punish Jerusalem. None of the remnant of Judah who have gone to live in Egypt will escape or survive to return to the land of Judah, to which they long to return and live. None will return except a few fugitives. Then all of the men who knew that their wives were burning incense to other gods, along with the women, women who were present, a large assembly, and all the people living in lower and upper Egypt said to Jeremiah, we will not listen to the message you have spoken to us in the name of the Lord. We will certainly do everything we said we would. <clears throat> we will burn incense to the queen of heaven, and we will pour out drink offerings to her, just as we and our fathers, our kings, and our officials did in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. At that time, we had plenty of food, and we were well off and suffered no harm. But ever since we stopped burning incense to the queen of heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have had nothing we have had nothing and have been perishing by sword and famine. The women added, when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings to her, did not our husbands know that we were making cakes like her image and pouring out drink offerings to her? Then Jeremiah said to all the people, both men and women who were answering him, did not the Lord remember and think about the incense burned in the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem by you and your fathers, your kings and your officials, and the people of the land, when the Lord could no longer endure your wicked actions and the detestable things you did, your land became an object of cursing and a desolate waste without inhabitants as it is today. Because you have burned <coughs> incense and have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed him or followed his law or his decrees or his stipulations, this disaster has come upon you as you now see. Then Jeremiah said to all the people, including the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah and Egypt. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. You and your wives have shown by your actions what you promised when you said, We will certainly carry out the vows we made to burn incense and pour out drink offerings to the Queen of Heaven. Go ahead then, do what you promised, keep your vows, but hear the word of the Lord, all Jews living in Egypt. I swear by my great name, says the Lord, that no one from Judah living anywhere in Egypt will ever again invoke my name or swear, as surely as the sovereign Lord lives. For I am watching over them for harm, not for good, 
The Jews in Egypt will perish by sword and famine until they are all destroyed. <clears throat> Those who escape the sword and return to the land of Judah from Egypt will be very few. Then the whole remnant of Judah who came to live in Egypt will know whose word will stand, mine or theirs. This will be the sign to you that I will punish you in this place, declares the Lord, so that you will know that my threats of harm against you will surely stand. This is what the Lord says. I'm going to hand Pharaoh, Hophra, king of Egypt, over to his enemies who seek his life. <clears throat> Just as I handed Zedekiah, king of Judah, over to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the enemy who was seeking his life. This is what Jeremiah, the prophet, told Baruch, son of Neriah, in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Hosiah, king of Judah. After Baruch had written on a scroll the words Jeremiah was then dictating. <clears throat> this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to you, Baruch. You said, Woe to me. The Lord has added sorrow to my pain. I am worn out and groaning and find no rest. The Lord said, Say this to him. This is what the Lord says. I will overthrow what I have built and uproot what I have planted throughout the land. Should you then seek great things for yourself, seek them not. For I will bring disaster on all people, declares the Lord. But wherever you go, I will let you escape. <clears throat> with your life. So the, <clears throat> yes, sorry. Yes, yes. <clears throat> so here we, you know, now we, we've come um, to the <clears throat> end of, of where God has taken or um, um, Judah is going is going to be handed over, and <clears throat> then the judgment of the rest of the nations are, go are we're going to follow uh, in the other uh, chapters to follow. But <clears throat> Baruch here is promised in the in the last part <clears throat> that he is going to be uh, taken care of as long as he <clears throat> as long as he. Uh, where, wherever he goes, and as long as he doesn't seek great things for himself. <clears throat> so, oh, we've got some time here. So, Jeremiah, these chapters <clears throat> that we've covered tonight, which, you know, I, I still find very interesting. It's, it's uh, you know, we've gone through these chapters so far, and it's just, you know, it's, it's time and time and time again that God is trying to tell the Jews through Jeremiah, this is what I want you to do. And if you'll just do this, this is what your promises will be. But how stubborn they are. And, and here in the last chapters here where they said, you know, life's good. When when we weren't we weren't when we weren't doing what you wanted us to do, life was good. <clears throat> we didn't we didn't suffer from hunger or anything, and uh, but not realizing that it was because of the fact that they that they were doing that God was tired of them not obeying Him, and so He caused all these things to start happening as He had promised that He would do. <clears throat> So these chapters continue the, uh, to depict the events of the fall of Jerusalem and over to the Babylonians and the, the immediate aftermath of the destruction. And then the interaction between the remnants of Judah and the Babylonian authorities and the uh, messages that, Judah, that Jeremiah delivers to God. And as we studied there in chapters 40, um, after Jerusalem's fall, the captain of the guard, Nebuzaradan, recognizes Jeremiah as a prophet who had foretold these events, as what we had mentioned. And because of this, he gives Jeremiah the choice. You can go to Babylon, where he promises to look after him, or he can stay with the remnants of his own people. And <clears throat> you know, so the, the guard recognized Jeremiah's position um, and because of his prophecies you know his prophecies had actually been favorable to the Babylonians because 
they, he was telling the Jews, uh, Jeremiah was, do what the Lord says. You're going to be taken into the Babylonians and build houses there, marry there, start families there, and you'll be okay. <clears throat> Jeremiah decides to stay with the remnant of the people, and he's ultimately taken to Mizpah, where uh, Gedalia had been appointed governor. And despite Jeremiah's clear counsel and strength, um, and the and the and the strength of the Babylon army, there was the rebellion that we saw of the Babylonian rule, and <clears throat> especially after the assassination of Gedalia, that had been appointed the governor by the king of Babylon, and. So the remnant that was left there, they continued to feel fear of the, of the Babylonians because of the fact that this governor had been assassinated. And so they decide to flee to Egypt despite all the warnings that Jeremiah said not to go there. And he warns them what's going to happen uh, by trying to escape, that they will still be found there in Egypt. And God promised them that they're going to be found there and they're going to be taken care of in a negative way and they're going to be dealt with. Um, <clears throat> so this was their continued uh, insistence on going to Egypt of their refusal to submit to God uh, and his authority. They were bringing disaster upon themselves. And Jeremiah continuously admonished those people and for their disobedience and their uh, rebellion in, in idolatry, social injustice, and not listening to uh, the prophets, not listening to Jeremiah. And of course, this, as we've gone through all these chapters so far, this continued disobedience leads to the fall of Jerusalem and the exile of its people. <clears throat> but after the people arrived in Egypt, uh, when we got into chapter 43, Jeremiah prophesies again and brings another message to them and he says that Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon is going to come and he's going to strike the land of Egypt and he's going to set up his throne he's going to spread his royal canopy here in Egypt and he will burn down the temples of the gods of Egypt and you know this is uh, significant because it you know as I mentioned a little bit earlier it's it signifies there is no escape from from God and his judgment not even in Egypt where Judah the people of Judah thought could be their place of refuge <clears throat> the but you know the, the, this chapter these chapters really uh, one of the important uh, one important part or note to take out of it is the obedience um, the importance of the obedience to God's will. And despite the destruction and circumstances, God continues to speak through Jeremiah, offering guidance, offering them guidance if they would just listen. And, <clears throat> but they get very defiant of Jeremiah and God's uh, message. And, um, but God still promises to take care of Jeremiah and to take care of uh, Baruch uh, and so you know it depends on uh, it regardless of political authority uh, the reliance on on this person or that person uh, we cannot ever divert the judgment that God's going to be having uh, for us and so it's our repentance and submission <clears throat> to God in our own lives that bring the protection for our lives. Uh, submitting to his will is what brings protection to our lives and eventual salvation. Uh, as we mentioned several times, uh, God didn't promise that things, that the road is going to be rosy and smooth. There's going to be a lot of bumps in the road because he promised that people are going to hate you in my name. And, uh, uh, and, but we have to, we have to continue to remain strong and remain faithful.
to him despite whatever our, our, uh, the obstacles that are in front of us. Because the obstacles that are in front of us are the opportunities that we have to grow stronger in, uh, in him and the knowledge of the word. We have a little time. Does anybody have any questions or any comments? Nope. Okay, well then we'll get home early and get to go to bed early tonight. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Father, we just thank you so much.